Hi, welcome to an introduction to cosplay armor crafting with me, Psycat Cosplay. This is, I'm going to have a, you know, presentation. Uh, you're more than welcome to ask questions throughout or at the end, wherever you might have a question. I'm more than happy to answer questions as we go or at the end. I have, uh, if you want to ask more questions after uh, the panel, I have cards so you can get in contact with me. I also have some work examples up here if you want to come up and look at them after the presentation more closely. So you're more than welcome to come up and check these out. They're various materials and I'll go over them as I go through the panel. So today I'm going to be talking a bit about a couple of different things, just learning curve, what I use in making cosplay, the different materials that I commonly use, uh, foam and thermoplastics are the materials I use the most, as well as some less commonly used materials or materials that you might not see as much. Uh, and then again, questions and answers. Feel free to ask any time or at the end. Like I said, I have work examples up here. This is my disclaimer slide as well. I've been cosplaying for quite a bit of time, but I am not the end all be all of information about cosplay and armor making. There are many other people who do things much better than I do or do them differently. So the way I do things is not necessarily the way that, you know, somebody over here does, does these things. So everybody has preferred techniques, preferred materials. So take everything that I say with, this is my experience and my opinion, not necessarily how somebody else would do it or how even you would do it. So if you wanna do something or work with a material in a way that is different, that's not bad. That's totally fine and actually probably will work out in the end. So I am Cat Cosplay. I'm actually MAGFest's first ever cosplay guest. So yay. <laughs> Uh, they invited me this year to be their cosplay guest. I've been working with Mag since 2016, doing panels and workshops with them. I've been cosplaying uh, since 2014, full-time since 2018. And I am actually an educator here in Maryland. I work at Chesapeake Art Center, if you know where that is. I teach classes on sewing and cosplay for kids. We're working on getting some adult classes as well. So if you are actually in the area and would like to get more classes or more information, check out Chesapeake Art Center. They're located in Anne Arundel County, um, which is like, they're actually like about five minutes away from BWI. So also if you wanna to talk to me more about that after the panel, you can as well. Uh, at this point, I have no idea how many costumes I've made. It's somewhere over 40. I don't know, I haven't counted. And I have counted or I've tried to count and then I forget what I've actually made. But we all start from somewhere. This is me in 2005. I used to make Halloween costumes. I made a Willy Wonka. Um, uh, that, that you can't tell, but it's not great. <laughs> we all start somewhere. If you're just getting started in cosplay or making armor and you think it doesn't look great, it looks great. You just haven't been doing that long. So for whatever your skill level is, however long you've been doing it, it looks amazing. So like, this is just a reminder, like I didn't get to where I am without the experience that I have and the things that I've made and the projects that I've done. So one of the things I see a lot of people happen is they get, dis they, they start a project, they start cosplaying, they start making something and they get discouraged because it doesn't look the way they want it to look or doesn't look the way that they think it should look. It looks like how it should look because that's what skill level you're at. The only way you're gonna get better is to do more of it. So cosplay is all about trial and error. If at first you don't succeed, try again. I still, to this day, will make something, won't look right, in my opinion, I make it again. I've done that like multiple times on multiple projects that I just did. I will rip things apart, I will make it over again, I'll have to try again. It's learning is failure. If you're not failing at what you're doing, you're probably not doing it right. Um, that's one of the best lessons that I have learned is you do something wrong, you fix it, you learn from it, and then you do it right. Also, the number of times I've seen ripped things is so many. So just don't give up. So never give up, never surrender. If you get that reference, A plus. Also, 
There is something in cosplay called the five foot rule. Do you know about that? If it looks fine from five feet away, you did it right. <laughs> Unless you're competing, when that's a whole different ball game. But if, if it looks fine from in photos, if it looks fine from five feet away, you're, you're good. So these are some of the commonly used tools of the trade that I use. A lot of these are pretty inexpensive to buy if uh, finances are a uh, factor for you. A lot of these tools are pretty inexpensive. And also once you put the initial time money investment in you have these things so uh things that i commonly work with are a heat gun you can get these at anywhere for about 20 to 30 dollars although i don't know if inflation did something to that but a uh, heat gun is definitely something you need if you're going to be getting into armor making you also probably want to get a dremel i have currently i think it's a dremel three or four thousand it's a pretty fancy dremel with a flex shaft I think it was like over $100, but you can get more inexpensive Dremels. And Dremel is actually the brand name for rotary tools. So rotary sanding tools. You can also get uh, and use like um, nail. If you ever got your nails done and they use a nail thing on you, that's a, that's a Dremel. That's a rotary tool. So you can also get those and they work. They just uh, have different RPMs. Uh, you probably want to get a respirator. Uh, not just a mask. You probably want to get a fume rated respirator because a lot of the things that you end up working with when you do armor are nasty. They make really smelly smells and really obnoxiously dangerous uh, off gassing. So you want to get a nice respirator that fits your face well and has uh, fume rated cartridges. So you can find these on Amazon. You can find them at, at like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. Protect your eyes. That goes without saying, get, get yourself some safety goggles. And then uh, sharp pointy things. I use box cutters for most of my armor work or um, like heavy duty scissors for cutting thermoplastics. If you get sharp pointy objects, I usually use box cutters and then I get just a, a, a sharpener and that sharpener saves my life because uh, when you're cutting foam or like a lot of armor materials, they dull blades really quick. So instead of going through blade after blade after blade, just get a cheap sharpener. Like you can find them online um, pretty easily. Okay, so the first material I'm gonna talk about is EVA foam. You can make many different types of props and armor. This helmet is all EVA foam. If you look on the inside, it's black and white, those two different types of, or two different colors, same type of foam. But this is really super lightweight. The great thing about EVA foam is it's lightweight and it's cheaper. So if you're just getting started and don't have a huge budget, I would actually recommend EVA foam over other types of materials. Also, I would recommend maybe even starting with cardboard or duct tape. Those are great materials as well, or even like paper mache. Those are all valid and good to use um, and when you're getting started making armor. I did not know that was flavored water. <laughs> so it's versatile, it's fairly inexpensive. It, you can find it in Joann's now. Um, Yaya Han has like the little kiosk thing with foam if you need a foam right there. You can get it um, at, uh, you can still get the floor mats at, you know, like Harbor Freight or Lowe's or wherever. And there's many different companies that sell foam online now. So um, one of the big ones is TNT Cosplay Supply. Um, there's also Coscom Cosplay Supplies, which has sponsored me uh, for the workshop that I'm doing later in the weekend. Uh, I think Red Moon Cosplay is a Canadian company. You can get it from so many different online retailers. Just look up EVA Foam. I think you can even get it on Amazon um, pretty easily as well these days. When I first started cosplaying, foam companies were not a thing. So now that those, they are a thing and they're very readily and easily available, it's awesome. Also, this is a picture of me in my Diablo cosplay that I made in 2016. So it's quite old at this point, but it still looks pretty good. So like, I think I'm making that sort of thing like six years ago, like there's only up from here. So when you're talking about EVA foam, most people are gonna be talking about the two different, there's like types. It's all EVA, it's all ethylene vinyl acetate. That's the chemical name for EVA or 
what EVA is abbreviated for. Craft foam and EVA foam, they're all the same thing. They're just different thicknesses. So craft foam is usually one or two millimeters thick. And then when people require, you know, refer to EVA foam, they're usually referring to four millimeters and thicker. When you're buying foam, you can get it in many different thicknesses. Most companies carry two, four, six, eight, ten. Some will carry thicker. I know TNT carries up to like 24 millimeter or something like that. If you need really thick stuff, if you're making big props and you need to sandwich things. So it comes in a variety of thicknesses. I think European vendors tend to sell 135. It's really kind of weird how that happened, but most US-based vendors or Canadian vendors will sell two, four, six, eight, ten. So you can buy a lot of these things online. Like I said, um, this is a prop that I just made, which is mostly EVA foam, but it has some other stuff in there, which I will show you in a little bit. There's also a type of foam called L200 foam. This is not super commonly used anymore. It's less dense than EVA foam. It does the same thing. Like you can do the same types of shapes and work with L200. It is lighter. So if you're looking for something super duper light, L200. Again, like, like EVA foam, it is heat formable and it is sandable. So this helmet actually has a whole bunch of seams all over the top and the sides here where I had to put the pieces together to actually make it into the shape that it is. There's seams down the front, but what I did to hide the seams is I sanded the seams down and then I sealed them and I'll talk about the sealing process a little bit later. So EVA foam, pretty cheap. A 23 by 59 sheet varies in cost depending on thickness. I think anywhere from about $12 to like $20. And this is the helmet for my Medieval Unit 2 cosplay. And I think I'd used three or four sheets total. So probably the foam costs were under $100 for the armor um, in total for this cosplay. It is a pretty heavily armored cosplay too. So I think that's cost estimate wise, that's about what I spent. So yeah, there's EVA foam and there's L200 foam. Those are the most commonly found and used types of foam, those two. When you're working with foam, uh, repeat after me, not to prime is a crime. Thank you. For any cosplay prop, any cosplay armor, you always want to seal your foam or whatever you're working on your 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 thermoplastic, your pink insulation foam, anything. You always wanna make sure that there's a barrier between whatever your material is and your paint. If you don't seal and prime your foam before you paint, the paint actually soaks in, becomes very dull, and just you can tell when someone didn't prime their foam. If you're pressed for time, still prime your foam, please. There's many different options for sealing and priming, but it's always very necessary. If you don't do it, you might just get really frustrated with your project. There's things like Plastidip, which is a spray-on rubber. You can get that from Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever, you know, hardware store. Plastidip is a spray-on primer. It is very smelly. Do it outside. Do not do it inside. It is very smelly, very noxious. So even when I'm doing it outside, I actually do it in my garage with my garage door open. I'm wearing a fume respirator because it is very, very smelly and disgusting and I don't want to smell that. So if you're doing Placid Dip, wear a fume respirator, do it outside. Also, there is a temperature range on Placid Dip. If you do it under 55 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to have a bad time. It will take forever to dry and it will bubble. So if, if wherever you're spraying is under 55 degrees Fahrenheit, I say don't do it. In lieu of that type of primer, you can use uh, things that are PVA glue, polyvinyl acetate glues. That, that's basically Elmer's glue, but there are now different formulations of that type of primer. So things like Hexflex, Flex uh, Seal, yeah, Flex Seal. Um, Mod Podge is a PVA glue. 
Um, you could even use Elmer's glue. Which the, Elmer's is really watered down and not very thick, and you'd have to do like a billion layers. But in a pinch, Mod Podge works really well. Um, and then Hexflex is a specialty cosplay-related PVA glue primer. Those are all brush-on and non-toxic. So if you need to do stuff inside, I very much recommend PVA glue primers or if it's cold out. So I will use Plastidip and PVA primers interchangeably. It really just depends on the conditions that I am working in. Um, so if it's summertime, Plastidip. If it's not, I will switch to a PVA glue primer. So once you have primed your foam, it is time to get ready to paint. This is something you can do either before or after priming, which is um, finishing seams with quick seal. Uh, you can also finish seams with other materials, other fillers. So you can, if you have like foam clay, you can use foam clay to fill seams and gaps in your pieces. This was a uh, quick sealed I, I know because I remember doing it. Quick Seal is a silicone caulk and it's awesome, but it does shrink as it dries. So you need to do a couple of layers usually. I usually do two or three and you can thin it out with water. The only thing with Quick Seal is once you've put it on, it's not sandable because it's silicone based. So you try to sand it, you're gonna have a bad time. Also, I forgot to mention earlier, Plasti Dip. Whenever you're using Plasti Dip, always heat the can. So what I do is I take really hot water and I just stick the can in like the really hot water for about five minutes, shake it really well, and then spray. And whenever I'm spraying Plasti Dip, I usually spray about 12 inches away from whatever I'm spraying. That's a good distance away from whatever surface you're spraying. But I always eat the can. It really just, it makes it smoother somehow. I learned that from the internet. I think from Can We Cosplay. Um, always eat your can. And then once you have sealed and primed, whatever order you've done that in, you can also prime with filler primer. If you want to take the time to make sure everything is super smooth, you hit it with a couple of coats of filler primer and then um, sand it and then do your thing with paint. You don't have to do this. I'm a perfectionist. Um, also, if I'm crunched for time, no. <laughs> no, I'm skipping that step. You don't need to do it. It's just a, an aesthetics thing. Um, like this piece has been sanded all to hell, but this was a competition piece. So that's special. Okay, so thermoplastics, which this is. This is actually a thermoplastic called Thebra. There are a wide variety of thermoplastics out there. There's Warbla, there's Wonderflex, Thebra, Cobra Cast, some I'm forgetting. There's a ton of different types of thermoplastic. Thermoplastic is kind of like the OG cosplay armor material. It's much, it was much more common in like the early 2010s than foam because it was much more easily available somehow versus, versus EVA foam because back then the EVA foam didn't exist in different thicknesses. So um, in the Wayback Machine, a lot of people used to use thermoplastics. They are expensive. That is the drawback to thermoplastics. They do cost quite a bit more than EVA foam. So for like a jumbo sheet of thermoplastic, which I think is like 40 inches by 59 inches, it's like, I think a hundred bucks maybe. I don't, I haven't bought it in a while, so I don't know exactly the cost. It is more expensive, but with thermoplastic, you can use the whole sheet. Foam, once you cut it, it's cut. There's no putting it back together. Thermoplastics, once you cut them, you're like, oh no, I made a mistake. You just use heat and you go whoop and you kind of jiggle them back together. Like I've actually taken scraps and made new sheets before. So unlike foam where there is a lot of wastage, thermoplastics, there is zero waste. I save all my scraps. I have a dedicated scrap bin that is literally almost a decade old at this point of stuff that I've saved and I keep using. So even if you have the tiniest little teeny wee scrap, you can put it in your scrap bin and then heat it up at a later time, make a new piece with it or make a detail piece. There's no wastage. There's also things like crystal art now, where it's, it's crystal clear, um, pearly, 
um, deco. There's so many different types of thermoplastic. The one thing that I will say between EVA foam and Warbler, there is different learning curves. So if you get really good with one and then you try the other and you're like not really super great and you're like, what's wrong? Because I'm really good at this other material. They are very different. They have different learning curves. So if you want to try one versus the other, go for it. Just know that they do have different learning uh, times and, and curves. So like I mentioned with the earlier with the shield, this is its unpainted. That shield has warbla around the edges. So the warbla, the thing with thermoplastic is it's much sturdier than foam. This, she's squishy. This, no squish. So the one thing with thermoplastic armor, it does last quite a bit longer than foam. Foam can get deformed, foam can crack. This, I could throw it around and it would be fine. I'm not gonna, but I could. So like I said, there's a, there's a different learning curve and a definite learning curve with, with thermoplastic. It also takes longer to work with because you have to heat it and then you have to wait for it to cool because that's a thermal plastic, thermoplastic. You heat it up, you manipulate it, and then it has to cool down. Also, thermoplastic, don't ever leave it in a hot car or else you'll be sad. So if it gets above like 130 degrees Fahrenheit in your car, it goes meow. And also the same thing with 3D prints. Don't ever leave 3D prints in a hot car. They will get sad. Also with thermoplastic, I usually use like craft foam or other very thin foam to back it. Because on its own, it's very wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. Um, so it will get really bleh. So I usually use craft foam to back it to keep it from losing its shape or to keep its shape, or I double layer it or triple layer it. So the more layers you have, the better it holds shapes. So attaching armor, there's many different ways to do it. Uh, D-rings, Velcro, elastic, parachute clips, zippers. If you're interested in learning more about attachments, there's tons of YouTube tutorials. I think I have some, I don't know, they might be old. But um, so this armor here, the fingers are glued onto the glove. The back of the hand is actually a separate piece that has a piece of elastic on it. The arm piece has uh, buckles and strap ups. I'm sorry, I swallowed the wrong way. The shoulder piece, I think it's Velcro. I'd have to go look at it. I don't actually have it here, but that's uh, Velcroed on. And yeah, so there's many different ways of attaching armor. There's no wrong way to do it. If you want to use like, you know, uh, zip ties and, and whatever, if it's attached, it's attached. It's on you. That's what matters. So other materials. Um, pink foam is one that is commonly used to make props. It's very, very super lightweight. You can carve it. But again, wear a mask because the, the, the dust from this stuff, it's insulation foam. Not great. Not great for your lungs. You can get it at any hardware store. Super cheap. I think I still have the same piece that I bought for $30 like years and years ago. Like you, you get a lot out of that insulation foam piece. It's easy to carve and sand. Um, the one thing about uh, pink insulation foam is there are many glues that will eat it. So uh, usually you wanna use a non-toxic like PVA glue, like um, liquid nails when you're gluing with it. Um, I don't have time for that. So I'm gonna just use hot glue and hopefully it doesn't melt too badly. So hot glue does work. It will still melt the foam a little bit. Uh, don't ever try super glue, it eats it. Don't ever try uh, barge or contact cement, it eats it. Um, spray glues will eat it. So they're, they're, this material is a little bit more limited in which you can glue because otherwise it eats the foam. One of the things I generally do with props like this is I actually will cover it in thermoplastic to make it more sturdy. So pink foam is super, super, super easy to break. So to make it more sturdy, you can use lots of wood glue, which is a different type of glue than PVA glue. I don't know if you ever follow like European cosplay makers and they say they prime with wood glue. It's not American wood glue. It's PVA glue. They just call it wood glue. It's not the same. Our wood glue is different. But you can prime it with gesso, wood glue, XTC 3D, which is a 3D print um, leveler. 
or thermoplastic. But be careful with the thermoplastic because if the thermoplastic is too hot, it will melt. So it, that's a bit of a, a tricky thing to do. Another commonly used material, which you don't necessarily see as often because of the limitations of working with it, because uh, is, is I'll t uh, hold on, I'll get to that in a second. PVC sheeting. So this is the same material as PVC pipe. So it's uh, PVC sheeting, um, more commonly known as Sintra. This was actually pretty commonly used in the Wayback Machine. Not so much anymore because when you heat it, it off gases. Do you want to know what it off gases? Chlorine. Polyvinyl chlorine. Yeah. So if you're ever working with PVC pipe and heating it to like bend it for props, don't gas yourself. Do it outside with a respirator. Uh, same thing with the PVC sheeting. If you're using it, you need to do it outside with a respirator on. Because otherwise, you're going you're gonna, to uh, World War I yourself. <laughs> yeah, I said that. Okay, glues. There's many different types of glue that cosplayers commonly use. I primarily use uh, contact cement. I call it barge. That's a brand name. And uh, hot glue. Those are my two main ladies. I also use um, super glue quite a bit. Also, it's called cyanoacrylate. That's the chemical name for super glue. If you're going to be using super glue, I do recommend Bob Smith cyanoacrylate glue. That's the best brand, in my opinion. There's also glues like E6000, um, and you can also get like two-part epoxies, like I already mentioned liquid nails. E6000, I don't use that much because it's really smelly. Like it's really disgusting. If you've ever rhinestoned, you may have used it. I have not, thankfully, but E6000 is one of those glues where if you're not wearing a, a fume-rated respirator, it could actually build up in your system and do nasty things in your system years later. So just be aware that when you're using some of the, and barge too, barge you want to wear a respirator for. When you're using these glues, some of them are smelly. So if you don't want to deal with all that, stick to hot glue. It's a thermoplastic. It does not smell. It burns, but it does not smell. Different type of harm. So some other materials that I commonly use are things like epoxy sculpt. Epoxy sculpt is a two-part epoxy system. The great thing about epoxy sculpt is it will not shrink as it dries and it is sandable and it bonds easily to other materials. The bad part about epoxy sculpt is it gets heavy. It gets heavy very quickly. I've seen a shift away from epoxy sculpt to things like foam clay over the past couple of years just because of the, the weight factor and epoxy sculpt has a limited working time. Foam clay does too, but uh, epoxy sculpt generally you can only work for it with it for like a half hour to maybe an hour or so before it starts to get like it starts to cure and gets too hard to work with. I do like epoxy sculpt though because it does not shrink. It also is very hard once you're done with it. So if you're trying to do something on something flexible that's meant to be flexible, I do not recommend epoxy sculpt. But if you're doing it on a piece that's not going to get any flex that you want to have and be able to sand it, great, awesome. It is awesome. And then foam clay. It's air drying, which is great. However, if you're trying to like, you can, you, often people will use molds with foam clay. If you're gonna use molds with foam clay, you actually need to stick them in the freezer, freeze it for a while, and then take it out because otherwise, your, whatever you're molded, it won't cure because it needs air to cure because there's liquid in it and the liquid needs to evaporate. It's pretty easy to sculpt. Um, you can just get a little bit of water and use it to manipulate the, the foam clay. It's sandable, it's flexible to a point, and it is very lightweight. So I've used it for filling in gaps, making details, hiding seams. It's pretty versatile. The one drawback is you may think it's very super flexible, but it really isn't. It actually has a much higher tendency to crack than just EVA foam. So foam clay is basically like little tiny EVA foam particles suspended in other chemical things. I don't know the chemical composition of foam clay, but there's many different brands and types. Um, the one I put up here is from SKS Props, but there's many different types of foam clays that are now available. Like I think it's like FOMO. Anyway, I don't know all the brands. There are a lot. 
But um, the foam clay on this costume is in the lance on the swirly bits. Swirly bits would be real hard to do in thermoplastic. It would be real hard to do in regular EVA foam. But you know what's not hard? Foam clay. Can you mix materials? I get this question a lot. Oh, yeah. All the time. Uh, this costume, I'm going to point it out. Um, the fingers in the back of the hand, they are thermoplastic over foam. The arm piece on this costume is actually a thermoplastic base with EVA foam panels on top. The shoulder is a thermoplastic base with EVA foam panels on top and also e uh, thermoplastic details. The little emblem guy thing, um, that is 3D printed, actually resin printed. A friend of mine did that for me. The little sword dagger thing is uh, EVA foam. So I mix and match materials all the time. Yes, you can mix. I honestly wouldn't do a lot of this costume in just one material. It would be much more difficult to execute a costume like this in different, in, in the same material. There's, I don't know if you can see, there's like little like things coming off the chest, like little tendrils. Doing that in EVA foam would be actually very difficult to get the correct shape and to get them to stay and to finish them because they're really thin. And if I moved wrong, I would crack one of those things right off. So they are thermoplastic. Um, and because they're thermoplastic, they're not gonna go anywhere. They're great, they're, I'm not gonna break them. Um, I don't have a picture of this because I've never used it, but you can get uh, see-through foam. So it's called plastizote or LED foam. It's foam that's translucent to light. It helps diffuse LEDs. I just haven't had a project that's used this type of foam. Looks cool. And you can paint it like you can paint and prime it like you can with EVA foam. Thing is, though, if you use a lot of primer and you use a lot of paint, it will negate any see-throughness. So be aware of that when using LED foam. Okay, let's see. Leather. I haven't done it, so I can't tell you anything about it. Um, but I do know that it's a very versatile material and it's great for armor or garments, depending on the weight of leather that you are using. I would like to do leather working. I just personally haven't done any leather projects to date. So if you wanna ask me about it, I have no answers. Again, 3D printing. I don't do it, so don't ask me about it. There are so many people who do do 3D, do 3D printing. There are many great resources out there. Um, it's just a personal preference that I just haven't try. I haven't bought a 3D printer because I have a lot of friends who have them. So why would I get one? Make your friend do it. It's. It's just a personal preference. 3D printing is awesome. It's an awesome way to make armor. I have friends who only do 3D printing and only do 3D printed armor and they look amazing. It's just, that's the material that I just don't wanna work with at the moment. So like I said at the beginning, this is my experience. These are my preferences. I don't wanna do 3D printing at the moment. It's a different learning curve than the materials that I know. And it's a different set of materials than the materials I know. I could learn it. I might learn it at another for future point in time. I'm just not doing it at the moment. Same with leather. I've been meaning to do leather work. I've been meaning to try leather armor. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Molding and casting. I have done it. This is a piece that I molded and casted. So I made it in out of clay and then I made a mold and then I made it in resin. I don't recommend this for beginners. Uh, this is definitely more advanced technique to do molding and casting, but it is great if you need multiple pieces of the same armor. So I actually have two of these. This goes with my Magda costume, which I'm actually be wearing tomorrow. It is a competition piece, so I needed two pieces that look exactly the same for the back of the hand, so I molded and casted it. If you wanna get into this, this is really expensive because you need clay, you need silicone, you need resin, you need a degassing chamber or a pressure pot or both. This is when you start to really drop thousands of dollars on your costumes, literally. So if you're just getting started, maybe not this, 
but it is a really good way to make armor and it's really durable. Like I can, <laughs> nothing bad is happening. I will throw that piece. It's fine. So resin is really super durable. And the great thing about resin too is there's different types of resin with different like hardnesses. So like this is a rigid resin. You can get semi-rigid. You can get like, you can cast in like polyurethane. Like there's so much to do and so many options with resin casting. It's great. All right. We've reached a point where I'm getting done and just shamelessly self-promoting myself. So you can follow me and find me all over here. It's also all on my card. But I'm on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and I have a website, I think. Yeah, I do. So those are all of most of my, so oh yeah, also I have an Etsy, which I didn't list there, but I sell patterns. I sell digital patterns. So if you ever have a question about pattern making as well, which is an entirely different skill set, I'm more than happy to answer questions. Or if you need a pattern, I have a lot of them on my web, sh web store storefront. Questions. Also, thank you for being here. Yeah. If you have a, I think that mic is, you can either ask from there or you can come up to the mic, it doesn't matter. Question, yeah, uh, pink hair. Oh yeah, I have a cat. Uh, it is a struggle to get him not to be around when I'm doing smelly things. I will, I have a dedicated craft room. I kick him out. Yeah. If you have pets, don't do a lot of this stuff around your pets. Uh, it, you do need a dedicated space if you're doing anything that off gases or smells or makes dust. Do not do it around your pets. Uh, Mikasa? Yeah. Flexibility, no. The difference in end result is you may get brush strokes with the PVA glue primers. You can sand that out though. Um, you can wet sand PVA glues. Like you can take a little bit of water and, and sand it to get rid of brush strokes if you're being that perfectionist about it. Um, the one thing about Plastic Dip though is you have to go in light layers because you can get drips. And those you can't sand out, you literally have to rip it off and sand it down and then start over. This question over there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so do you have an attached garage or separate? It's attached. I don't. <laughs> I live with it. I open my garage door when I can and just leave it open. I live in a pretty safe neighborhood, so I'm not worried about, like I've literally left my garage open by accident overnight. Nothing bad happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, question? Yeah, so with the upcoming thermal class this week and like mold it with the pizza, yeah. if you're just using um, EVA foam, is it possible enough that you just like bend it and manipulate it and then glue it in place? Or how do you make the shape? Oh, how do I get EVA foam to hold its shape? Yeah. yeah, heat gun. So um, if you come to my workshop, we will go over that. Shameless self-promotion. Um, I'm gonna go back to over here. It is Saturday, seven to nine. It does cost $5, because I need to reimburse myself for materials, because I bought stuff. Uh, when you're heating EVA foam, you wanna use a, uh, a heat gun. A hair dryer does not cut it, does not get hot enough. When you're heating EVA foam, generally what I do is I do a first heating pass, and you can actually see, there's like a, a surface change that happens when the cells close. So the when you heat it, the cells will close. You can see it kind of gets shiny a little bit. It I don't know if I, how that, that's the best way I can describe it. And once it does that, it is you can manipulate it into the shape that you want, and then you have to hold it until it cools down. And then it doesn't necessarily hold its shape all that great that first pass. So what I do is I will heat it again. So I do two heat passes over a shape to get it to stick into that shape. Sometimes you might need more. Uh, just depends on how, how much you're manipulating it. Also, EVA foam does not do uh, convex curves. So to get the shape for this helmet, I had to do four separate pieces. So there's one, two, three, four to get this shape. Warbler will. So for like breastplates, I will use Warbler for the, the boobies and then EVA foam for the other stuff. 
Um, Because EVA foam will not do a seamless chest of a lady. So that's sometimes why I mix and match materials. A uh, question, yeah. Both, both, yeah. Yeah, you wanna get it, EVA foam doesn't hold heat for a long period of time, so I will run the heat gun over both the inside and the outside of the piece to shape it. Also, it helps close the cells on both sides and that just helps with the, the stability of the curve of whatever I'm trying to do. What's another question over here? Star Trek. It's not a substitute. It is all, 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 all super glues, I believe, are sanarcholate. It's just Bob Smith. Yeah. I don't know. It just is. Um, I think it's just the concentration of the chemical um, in the cyanarchalate. And, and Bob Smith also has uh, super glues with different curing times. So it has fast cure. It has slow cure. It also has, uh, they also sell an accelerant. So you, you literally will super glue something and you... And then it like immediately cures. So I use uh, super glue if I'm gluing down tiny little details because uh, I don't want to have barge everywhere. Or you know, like if you're using hot glue, hot glue tends when you squish it down, hot glue tends to out the sides. Super glue won't do that. It will cure down. So if I'm gluing tiny, tiny details, I always use um, super glue. More question? Yes, question. Yeah. 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 Nope. Okay. <laughs> um, well, so I decided to have the base as thermoplastic because it's more sturdy um, and it will keep it shaped better and it will actually last longer. Uh, so like I have thermoplastic armor that I literally made in 2016 looks, except for like some paint chips, looks totally fine. Some of the armor I made last year out of EVA foam is unfortunately, because I have to store it in storage containers, gets squished and it just gets <laughs> You can unsquish EVA foam armor uh, with heat. It's just annoying. Um, so if like this, this helmet actually has gotten squished before and I've had to very carefully unsquish it, but when EVA foam, it, you can also crack the paint job on the EVA foam when it gets too squishied or squishified. Uh, and that's just like, oh, I'm sad now. It's got squished. Um, I can squish this, this no squishy. Also, this will just last forever. Um, so I also, this is, there's EVA foam in here. There's craft foam. There's two milliliter foam. And then thermoplastic. Actually, you think the, yeah, the, the base piece of this is Warbla. And then these are Thebra. Don't ask me why I did that, because Thebra is really annoying to work with. And I had to sand the ever-living hell out of this thing to get it to be this, this smooth. Question, yes. As far as the thermoplastics are concerned, uh, I know that Warbla comes in a couple of different colors. Yeah. So what is your experience using the different colors? Black Warbla. Black Warbler. Yes. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, it's, it's the, so Warbler itself is backed with, it, it's like wood shavings and plastic that are mixed together. Black Warbler is something else. And yeah. Also, I don't like Pearly. Pearly's weird. Anyway, other questions? Yes. Yes. Not yet. People need to ask them. I've been petitioning them to get adult classes. They just haven't been super popular. Um, but email them and bug them. That does cosplay specific classes. Unfortunately, I don't. Um, I just started there a year ago, so we are working to increase the curriculum. Um, I'm trying to do workshops there. I think I have an adult workshop scheduled for January, so check that. Check the workshops. There's another question back there. Yes. All acrylics. I just use craft acrylics. Um, you can get uh, like Plaid FX has like flexi 
um, or like more flexible paints. Also Hexflex makes more flexible paints. It doesn't really matter unless your piece needs to flex a lot. Uh, so like I said, if you want to come up here and, and check these out, you're more than welcome or grab a card or whatnot. Um, I think, what time is it? Yeah, we have about 15 more minutes. So if you want to chat, uh, shop talk or, or anything or come on up, you're more than welcome. Yeah. This is airbrushed. This is spray painted and then hand painted on top. So I, I will mix and match depending on the, the, so like this red, I could not get this type of, of red with a brush on um, type of paint. So this is air, actually the, the silver is brushed, the red is airbrushed. So the red airbrush, this type of kind of pearlescent would be really difficult in brush on acrylic. So I airbrushed this whole costume and then my whole craft room was like red for weeks. <laughs> Do not recommend uh, airbrushing inside without a spray booth, which I need to build. Uh, so I haven't airbrushed in a while uh, just because this costume was a nightmare uh, to paint. But yeah, the whole, all of the red paint on this costume, which I'm wearing tomorrow is airbrushed. And then um, I don't actually really like spray paint so much, but I will do it if I have a big surface to cover. Because the one thing about spray paint is once you spray paint it, it depends on the type of spray paint, it, it will not interact well with acrylics over top. Like they'll like resist a little bit laying down. It's really bizarre. Also, don't ever mix brands of spray paint. I have definitely uh, done myself dirty by mixing brands and then the paint cracked. It was awful. I hated every minute of it. And that was on one of my really, oh, anyway. Yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't mix brands. You will be sad. Are well, there other questions? Yes. Unfortunately, no. Leather, uh, leather, maybe. Uh, but it's leather still gonna be hot too. So any armor, you're, you're, you're gonna be hot. Um, if you have a problem with that, and like with overheating, uh, there are quite a number of cosplayers who I know who have invested in water cooling vests. Um, so if you're in a very armored thing, you can get those water cooling vests um, for your core. And um, quite a number of people I know do install, it, it, like it, they install fans in, in pieces if they need to. Also, that's a pretty common thing with fursuiters is they will have fans and, and water cooling vests as well. Also, I try not to wear armor in the summer. <laughs> that doesn't always work out, but I try. I try to do seasonally appropriate, it doesn't work, but you, yeah, you could try to do seasonally appropriate cosplay. Do you need to know? Do I suffer for my art? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Uh, I just go for it. Um, I pattern like a gremlin. I will cover myself in plastic wrap and tape and just make a thing. Or paper, like I actually just use, news, like I get free newspaper that shows up at my house and I'm like, ooh, free paper. I use the newspapers to make a lot of my patterns. Um, so the the plastic plastic wrap tape method is pretty common, and I have a lot of that in my house. Or newspaper, or I will be an absolute gremlin and mash paper and then make tape and then make a shape out of that and then put plastic wrap and more tape over it. Um, you can also do things like make things at scale. So like horns, you could like... Uh, car or carve them out of something small and then make a small pattern and then scale that up. I also, with my pattern making, I make everything in real life before I actually put it into a computer. So if I'm making armor patterns, I make the pattern, I check the pattern in foam, and I take a picture of that pattern and then I digitize it. Um, so that means it's scaled correctly in the computer for anybody who needs to use it. Or if I'm making the pattern. I've actually used my own patterns because I lost the original or threw it out because my brain said, oh, that's a piece of trash. No, it wasn't. 
So things like that. Um, but yeah, tape. I also will often iterate my patterns, which means I will make a, sorry, make a pattern, make it in foam, it's not right, and then I do it again. So that happens quite often. Or what I'll do is I make a paper mock-up, it doesn't look quite right, and then I'll do it again. I've had to do that with the shoulder pieces, I've had to do that with arm pieces, like, so it's, there's a lot of just plastic wrap tape and paper all over when I'm pattern making. And pattern making is definitely a skill that takes time to get good at. So um, I know a lot of people get intimidated with cosplay because they don't know where to start. They don't know what kind of pattern to use. They don't know what to start with patterns. That's why I offer a lot of digital patterns for people to get started with. And then they use that and they're like, oh, this wasn't that hard. And I'm like, sweet, awesome. So like if you come to my workshop on Saturday, I have a pattern for you to use. Um, and then you get to keep the pattern if you want or just throw it out, it's just paper. I have it on my website, um, I think for a dollar or free. I don't remember, but that one's on my Kofi. Other questions? If you don't have any other questions, you can come on up or grab a card or whatever. Um, I think we have to be out of here in 10 minutes, but otherwise, thank you so much for coming. Yay.